I'm Teresa Maddich with Resource Investing News. Here with me today at PDAC is Mike Johnston, President and CEO of Nautilus Minerals. Mike, thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Teresa. Yep. So the resource at Sol Bar One has an exceptionally high grade of 7% copper and 6 grams per ton of gold. Yeah. Why is that? Well, it's very simplistically, it's because the fluids, the hot fluids, which come up from deep in the crust, um, as soon as they reach the seafloor, they go from being 400 degrees Celsius and a pH of 2, and they have to basically reach equilibrium with seawater at depth, which is 2.6 degrees Celsius and a pH of 8. And so to do that, they have to completely change their, their chemistry, uh, which means they have to drop all the metal which they're carrying almost instantly, right? And that's when you end up with material like this. So very, very high grade. So all the copper that's in that fluid gets dropped within half a metre. Uh, and it forms these chimney deposits of very high grade. And in the case of Sawara One and, uh, and most of our other systems, they also contain a lot of precious metals. So as you said, five grams of gold, you know, which on land that would be a high grade gold. Okay, and given all those benefits you just mentioned, New yep. Zealand did recently reject underwater mining. Mm. So, how is Nautilus reassuring investors in light yeah. of that? Well, the, the two projects that uh, that uh, have been in the news from New Zealand recently, both of those are actually very shallow water projects. They're actually what we call dredging. So the first project was in 50 or 60 metres of water depth, so quite shallow. Ours is, as I said, our first mine's 1,500 metres. So we're in very deep water. Um, and the second project was in water depths of about 200, 250 metres. Uh, both projects were given mining licences by the New Zealand government. Right? So the problem is actually in the, the legislation in New Zealand, and it's specific to New Zealand. Um, the environmental legislation has been written by environmental department and doesn't allow any development. So this is just blatantly ridiculous, um, and they either have to fix it or they've got a serious problem. So, so the rest of the world can see that. Um, we're really happy where we're working in Papua New Guinea. They have a very strong mining industry in Papua New Guinea. They have very good regulations. Uh, they have separate environment departments and, and mining departments, and we are um, monitored by both of those separately, and they have independent verification. So it's a very good system. So New Zealand has its problems, and they just have to fix it. So. Okay, yeah. and speaking of the environment, you must get questions about environmental impact. So I wanted to ask, how does Solwara 1 affect the deep sea, mid sea, surface levels, and what is Nautilus doing yeah. to mitigate that? Well, uh, what we did is a very extensive environmental impact assessment of the project uh, right at the start, uh, when we submitted our, before we submitted our permit. Um, and in that process, uh, we did a lot of studies, independent studies by researchers from the United States, uh, Australia, Canada, um, Europe, um, and those experts in their fields all produce various reports about the project and about the Sawara One site. Critical to those assessments was the full water column uh, current analysis, which we did. So we've done full water column current analysis, and that. Those studies show that it's physically impossible for any activities on the seafloor to, to impact above 1,300 metres water depth. So, you know, everything happens below 1,300 metres, and, and that's due to the fact that the deep water is colder and denser than the shallow water, right? And so the two don't mix, right? And in Sawara 1, they don't mix at all. Uh, where they do mix on the planet is at the poles when the surface water gets cooled right down and it starts to freeze. Then it's at the same temperature and density as the deep sea water. So that's where the water mixes, is, uh, by and large, is at the poles. So at Sawara 1, they don't mix, right? And so that keeps everything um, within the confines of the mine. Uh, and our system is designed uh, with a, a very, very uh, strong environmental focus. What we have is a steel riser system and a pump at the bottom of that riser system. We pump the mined material from the bottom of the ocean up into the vessel. We separate the ore from the water in the slurry. The water then gets pumped down return pipes, steel pipes, on the side of the main pipe all the way down to where the pump is at 1500 metres and then it's exhaust at that point 
so it goes right back to where it came from but before it goes back we actually filter it to 8 microns right, which is actually arguably cleaner than what it is down on the bottom right? because there's, there's ash and all sorts of volcanic activity happening down on the bottom of the, of the sea there so we actually put it back probably cleaner than what it is when we take it out Okay, and finally, you've partnered with the Papua New Guinean government for the project. What sort of support have you seen from them? Well, the Papua New Guinea government is very supportive of um, the mining and petroleum industry in general. Um, the Prime Minister and various ministers have said to me personally that they no longer want to be on the sidelines of resource development in their own country. They want to be active participants. So the government now has a policy of taking equity in new projects. Uh, they really like the Sawara One project, seafloor mining, because of all the benefits. You know, it doesn't have waste. We don't have tailings at all in our project. We don't have waste dumps. You know, uh, All the things which people don't like about mining on land are essentially not there for deep sea mining. So the, the PNG government has taken up a 15% equity stake in the project and it supports the project and in fact it supports it so much it paid all of its share in advance for the project. So, uh, And we've found the PNG government is a very good partner to have. You know, they're very supportive. Um, they work with you. They tell you when things are going well. They tell you when things are going bad. You know, And they pull you up. The, the government's ownership is also separated from the, the regulatory arms of government. So the Mineral Resources Authority, which is a separate entity that manages mining projects and their compliance, is separate to Petromin. So they have different ministers. Um, and then the Environment Department is also responsible for monitoring environmental compliance with your mining licence conditions, your environmental conditions, and that's got a separate minister and separate from Petromin as well. So the government separates its regulatory and its investment arms and is treated just like any other investor. So it's a very good system. Thanks okay. for joining me. That's all right. It's been a pleasure. I'm Teresa Maddich with Resource Investing News.